Hello gamers, I am John, host of Video Games in the World, and today's episode for the season finale is the history of the legendary blue bomber from Capcom, Mega Man. The Mega Man X Legacy Collections 1 and 2 are underway, as well as Mega Man 11. So in honor of their release on the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC, this episode will be dedicated to Mega Man and its spin-offs. I have been a long fan of Mega Man since my childhood days, and so is my sister who got me into it. I remember owning Mega Man X on the Super NES, and I freaking loved playing that game all the times that I wanted. I then played Zero, Battle Network, Star Force, and ZX. Mega Man is one of the biggest game franchises of all time, and now we are going to dive into its history. Enjoy! The character of Mega Man has been created by Akira Kitamura and nicknamed the Blue Bomber by fans. It's a robotic main character and hero in the classic Mega Man series and the most well-known Mega Man version of the entire franchise. He replaced Captain Commando as the unofficial mascot of Capcom and continues to be one of the video game industry's most recognizable icons. For years, it was thought that Keiji Inafune was the creator, but in 2007 at the Tokyo Game Show, Inafune revealed that his mentor Kitamura was the original creator of Mega Man. So I only did half of the job in creating him. I didn't get to completely design a Mega Man from scratch until Zero. Back when the Super NES was coming out, I was asked to give Mega Man a redesign, so I created this character. But I realized that this design wouldn't be accepted as Mega Man. So I had another designer to create the new Mega Man, and I worked on Zero to release him. As the other main character that would steal all the good scenes. As said by Inafuna himself. Although originally the names Mighty Kid, Knuckle Kid, and Rainbow Battle Kid were proposed, Capcom eventually settled on Rock Man as Mega Man's Japanese moniker. The word rock in Rock Man is a reference to the music genre rock and roll and is meant to work in tandem with his sister robot, Roll. However, Capcom Consumer Products Division President Joe Morishi changed the name from Rock Man to Mega Man because he felt the title was horrible. The idea behind Mega Man was a hit manga and anime character Astro Boy, known in Japan as the Mighty Atom. The Astro Boy character is actually based on a classic Pinocchio tale in which a kind-hearted and gentle old man invents a child for himself. Except that Astro Boy's nose doesn't grow when telling lies. <laughs> In the original series, the role of Mega Man is to fight against the evil scientist Dr. Wily and his robot masters located in many parts of the world. His sometime allies include Proto Man, Baz, and Duo. Eddie, the flit top robot, is usually sent to help Mega Man by providing him with recovery items during battle. Animal robots such as Rush, Beat, and Tango aid him as well. Mega Man's sister, Roll, is a popular character in her own right. The first six games of the series were released on the Nintendo Entertainment System and met with great success. The first game only had six robot masters. Cut Man, Guts Man, Alec Man, Ice Man, Fire Man, and Bomb Man. The second game had eight, and since then each game had eight robot masters. Mega Man was not only on the NES, but also had five successful games on the Nintendo's handheld, the Game Boy. And the first three games were compiled into one for the Sega Genesis and was released as Mega Man The Wily Wars. Mega Man also had a game on the Sega Game Gear. Proto Man in Mega Man 3 would test the abilities of his brother in every stage. If the player would be Proto Man in each fight, the player would earn the Proto Shield. Baz was first introduced in Mega Man 7. He was created by Dr. Wily and will often fight the Blue Bomber to prove his superiority. He also had the capacity to fuse with his dog, Treble, and become even more powerful using a flight capacity and stronger firepower. 
His faithful canine companion Rush would also help Mega Man in various occasions such as reaching higher places by using the Rush Coil. Other upgrades include Rush Marine, Rush Jet, Rush Bike, Rush Power Adapter, Jet Adapter, and the Super Adapter. These things were acquired when players met certain conditions like defeating Flame Man and Plant Man in Mega Man 6, as well as obtaining the R, U, S, and H place in the four intro stages of 7. In every game, Mega Man has evolved and was given new abilities and techniques. An example is the slide, introduced in Mega Man 3. In the fourth game, the Mega Buster allowed him to charge a shot. In Mega Man 6, he gained from Rush the abilities to hover for a short time and a short range attack that knocked back weaker foes and broke blocks. These two skills were fused together in his Super Mega Man form featured in Mega Man 7, which was released for the Super NES. Over the span of his career, most of these abilities were necessary in order to help him exceed any new challenges added by game programmers. After defeating a Robot Master, Mega Man would absorb its technique and use it against another boss. This type of gameplay of using a weapon effective against a Robot Master is a Rock Paper Scissor style type of gameplay. For example, when Mega Man fakes his off against Iceman, Elite Man's Thunder Beam is very effective. After defeating all the Robot Masters, Mega Man heads to Wily's base and fights off against stronger bosses. When nearing Wily, Mega Man fights the Robot Masters again, and after each fight he can recover his energy and weapons. Mega Man 8 was released on a PlayStation in 1997 and featured 32 bit graphics anime sequences, voice acting, and also new and returning abilities and techniques. Like Mega Man 7, the player completes an introductory stage and is presented with four Robot Masters, Tengu Man, Frost Man, Grenade Man, and Clown Man, to tackle in any order he or she chooses. At the end of each stage is a boss battle with a Robot Master. Defeating the Robot Master ends the player its master weapon. Most robot masters are weak to either the Mega Buster or one or more master weapon allowing for some strategy in the order the stages are completed. An additional four robot masters, Aquaman, Swordman, Searchman, and Astroman become available once the first four are defeated and an intermission stage is completed. A noteworthy addition to gameplay in Mega Man 8 is the ability to display and use multiple weapons on screen simultaneously. This change introduces a unique way of using weapons strategically. For example, Mega Man can place a tornado hold, jump into it, and swing the flame sword while rising with the air current. The player also has the ability to hit use his Mega Buster at all times, even when equipped with a master weapon. Otto's part shop from the last game also appears in the form of Dr. Light's lab, where the player can buy new abilities from Roll in exchange for special bolts found throughout the levels. However, due to a limited number of bolts and power-up slots available, the player must carefully decide which power-ups to buy. Special power-ups involving Mega Man's Dog Rush are won by fighting mid-stage mini-bosses. This is also the first and only game in the series in which Mega Man can swim. In 1998, Mega Man & Bass was released for the Super Famicom. Five years later in America, the game was released for the Game Boy Advance. However, it was released in 2002 in Japan on the Game Boy Advance. The graphics of the game are the same from Mega Man 8, despite being on the Super NES and received a lot of critical acclaim. While Mega Man could slide and perform charge shots, Bass could double jump and his charge shots are rapid fire. However, he can merge with treble as well. When merged with treble, he can fly and his shots are even more powerful. Russ can search for items and dig them out and also secret CDs. These CDs are scattered in different Robot Master stages and contains info on previous bosses from previous games. During Mega Man's previous battles against Wily and Baz, Wily had attempted to destroy Baz for fear of his growing disloyalty to Wily. As Dr. Wily plans a new attack against Mega Man with a new super robot known as King. 
Bass feels that his time working with Wiley has ended and seeks revenge for his attempted murder. Although Bass has still his rivalries with, against Mega Man, he teams up with a Blue Bomber on a quest to defeat Wily and his new robot for good. You have the choice of either using Mega Man or Bass for the entire game. Once you choose a character, you won't be able to switch to the other. Both characters have different endings for the game, so you'll definitely want to play through the game with as both characters to experience the full storyline. Rush and Trouble will be along for the ride, both having a special ability to aid Mega Man and Bass in their travels. Auto Shop would have loads of new items available, once again requiring bolts to purchase. Huge stages, tough bosses, and challenging gameplay make this one a tough game. More so in that there aren't any energy tanks available, so you'll need plenty of skill to make it through this one. The final battle against Dr. Wily will be the most challenging battle ever. After Mega Man and Bass, we would not have another game until 2008. The ninth installment in the Mega Man franchise was released and returned to its 8-bit origins and meeting with great success upon old and new gamers of the generation. Mega Man 9, according to developers, was a new Mega Man 2 because it did not include a charge shot, rush armor, or the slide. But still, everyone enjoyed its challenging difficulty. It was released on the WiiWare, Xbox Live, PC, and PlayStation Network. The story tells about Dr. Light being blamed for a series of incidents after robot masters that he created went berserk. After showing a news video of Light declaring planetary domination and Wily refusing to follow him, Wily announces that he needs monetary donations to complete the robots he built to combat those of Dr. Light. Mega Man vows to fight to prove his creator's innocence and expose Wily's true intentions. This game also introduced the very first female robot master in the series, Splash Woman. The last game, Mega Man 10, was released in 2010. Gameplay features from previous titles had returned, and for the very first time, Proto Man became a playable character. Like its predecessor, it has 8-bit graphics as well. Mega Man 10 takes place during the 21st century and continues the adventures of the android hero, Mega Man. An illness known as Roboenza suddenly begins infecting robots all over the world, causing them to malfunction and hamper human life. Mega Man's sister, Ro, becomes one of the disease's victims. A month following the outbreak, many of the infected robots go berserk and attempt to take over the world. Like its predecessor, the game met with great success. Mega Man 11 will arrive on October 2nd this year. However, while the gameplay still has a classic style, it now features 2.5 dimensional graphics with 3D polygonal characters and environments. Players control Mega Man as he attempts to stop Dr. Wily from using a double gear system he invented based on research he conducted years before. Players travel through linear stages before battling against one of Dr. Wily's eight robot masters, including Fuse Man and Block Man. Mega Man can perform classic moves such as the chargeable Mega Buster and Slide, as well as obtain new weapons by defeating Robot Master bosses at the end of each level. Unique to this game is the Double Gear system, which grants Mega Man two additional abilities, the Speed Gear and the Power Gear. The Speed Gear lets Mega Man slow down time, allowing him to dodge attacks, while the Power Gear increases the attack power of Mega Man's weaponry. Both of these will overheat if Mega Man uses them too much. When Mega Man's health is critically low, he can activate both gears to perform a powerful charge shot, which can only be used once and leaves Mega Man weakened afterwards. The game will have additional features, including time trials, missions, global leaderboards, a concept art gallery, and many more. The game will have four difficulty settings, Newcomer, Casual, Normal, and Superhero. Mega Man was so successful that the series spawned toys, manga, comic books by Archie Comics, and many more. In other media, Mega Man appeared in the Captain N, the Game Master cartoon series. In this cartoon, Mega Man is green colored and is part of the N team that saves video game worlds and the Kingdom of Video Land from the forces of Mother Brain of the Metroid franchise. Mega Man also had an 
OVA with three episodes titled Mega Man Upon a Star and also a Ruby Spears cartoon release in the mid-1990s. Like in the games, Mega Man fights against Wily and his robot masters. However, Proto Man is one of the antagonists and in one episode, Mega Man teamed up with his future self, Mega Man X, against Spark Mandrel and Vile himself. The Mega Man series had compilations into one CD on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. It also has the Legacy Collection on the PS4 and the Xbox One. In 1993, Mega Man X was released on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, thus introducing an upgraded version of the Blue Bomber. The Mega Man X series will be one of the most successful spin-offs of the Mega Man franchise, and in later years it will fall from grace with the sixth game. The Mega Man X series had a much more darker storyline than the original series. Mega Man X takes place in the 22nd century, where advanced robots with the ability to think, feel, and make their own decisions coexist with humans. These androids were known as Reploids. However, there were criminal activities involving Reploids. They were known as Mavericks, robots that were infected with a computer virus known as the Maverick virus. To counterattack these robotic criminals, a special military task force consisting only of Reploids was created. They were known as the Maverick Hunters. One of them is Mega Man X, an upgraded version of the original Mega Man created by Dr. Light. X would team up with his friend Zero and fight various Maverick bosses in every game and their arch enemy, Sigma. Not only Sigma will return countless times to fight the heroes, but also a treacherous replay called Vile, who bears a resemblance to Boba Fett from Star Wars, and other enemies called the X Hunters as well and even the Repliforce Army and mercenary Reploid Dynamo. The first three games were released on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. However, the third game in the series was also released on a PlayStation. The PlayStation version featured anime sequences which would be used in Mega Man X4 and in future titles. Like in the original Mega Man series, X starts with his X Buster and absorb enemies' abilities. However, the Mega Man X games would have intro stages in every game before battling the Mavericks. And speaking of intro stages, this is something that was done in Mega Man 7. X would also encounter capsules scattered in different stages to obtain armor parts which will allow him to dash and even perform a more powerful charge shot. There are also secret capsules in the first three games. In the first game, a secret capsule located in armor Armadillo stage would grant X the Hadouken by Dr. Light, who appeared in Ryu's costume. In the second game, in Agile stage, X will be granted the Dragon Punch. These techniques run the Street Fighter series of games would defeat bosses in one single blow. In Mega Man X3, there were capsules that could upgrade the armor parts. Once one of these capsules was obtained, the others would not be upgraded. A much better thing, however, would be to obtain the Golden Armor located in Doppler's first stage, but certain conditions were needed to be met, such as all four sub-tanks, all energy upgrades, and all the weapons as well. X would also pilot a ride armor, which some of them dashed or flew, and he would ride speed bikes as well. In Mega Man X3 and X6, X was given Zero's Beam Saber, X would use the Beam Saber in Mega Man X3 when defeating Vile with the right weapon at any stage fighting against Maverick bosses. In X6, the Beam Saber was passed on to X after the death of his friend. Most of the Mavericks were usually anthropomorphic robot animals and took off the man part which was usually traditional in the games. Zero became playable in Mega Man X3 but would be used only if necessary. Zero would then be fully playable for Mega Man X4 and onward. The character of Zero is a fan favorite of fans of the Mega Man X series. It is known that Zero was originally going to be the main character of the game, but then Keiji Inafune explained, When the X series came out, I really wanted to redesign Mega Man. I wanted a totally different Mega Man. 
I'm a designer, a creator. I wanted something new. I didn't want to use the same old Mega Man. The story of Zero is very dark and it is seen in Mega Man X4 that he was created by Dr. Wily, which explains why Sigma became a bad reploid in the first place. And in X5, he learns that he was the original carrier of the Maverick virus, which was also created by Wily himself. Zero will later be the main protagonist in Mega Man Zero, taking place hundreds of years after the Elf Wars, which took place after the Maverick Wars. The Mega Man X series was supposed to end after Mega Man X5, since Keiji Inafune was planning to make Mega Man Zero at the time. But Capcom went against Inafune's wishes and proceeded to make the sixth chapter of the story, taking place after the Eurasia incident which left the Earth severely damaged beyond repair. However, despite the gameplay, new armor upgrades, graphics, and voice acting, Mega Man X6 had a reputation for its unforgiving difficulty. Mega Man X7 would go from two dimensions to 3D for the first time, but was not as well received by fans of the original games. Mega Man 7 introduced a brand new character called Axel. Axel was part of the Red Alert unit and would ally himself with X and Zero. At the beginning, X has retired because he is exhausted from all the violence. But then, he comes out of retirement to fight against the Mavericks once again. Mega Man X8 received good re reviews compared to its predecessor. The final Mega Man X game was Command Mission for the GameCube and PlayStation 2, which was more of a role-playing game than action platforming like the original ones. Before that, in the late 90s, Mega Man X had the Extreme series on the Game Boy Color. The very first Mega Man X game was later remade with 2.5 dimensional graphics, returning gameplay elements, redesigns, anime sequences, and voice acting as well. It was released in 2006 on the PSP entitled Mega Man Maverick Hunter X. It is a remake of the original game for the Super NES. After beating this game, players can play as Vile, thus giving a story of what happens if X and Zero never beat at Sigma and the two heroes were defeated by the treacherous Reploid instead. Also, after beating the game, a four-part anime was able for gamers to view. It was titled, The Day of Sigma, that shows the world before Sigma openly turns Maverick. Mega Man X also had a collection series which included also a racing Mega Man game unreleased in the USA. The Mega Man X collection was on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. Coming this month is a Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Mega Man Legends is one of the most remembered spin-offs apart from Mega Man X. Many fans loved the game, and the first installment was released on a PlayStation in 1997. Four years later, the game was re-released on a Nintendo 64 as Mega Man 64. Mega Man Legends introduced Mega Man Volnut, in which he was not created by light, but sealed in a crystal, he is taken in by Barrel Casket and his granddaughter Roll. Mega Man Legends differs greatly from the platforming gameplay of past Mega Man games, the main factor being the three-dimensional worlds and the three-dimensional movement therein. Unlike the original Mega Man series, which are platform games, Legends is an action role-playing game with elements like lock-on targeting, which was later made by popular games such as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The player controls Mega Man Volnut across the title, in which he has to complete different missions such as investigating ruins or fighting pirates. The player travels through a large world with various dungeons that are explored in a certain order, as well as a town with non-player characters to talk to. As such, the plot is revealed through cutscenes. Legends 2 was released three years later after the first game, and that same year, Misadventures of Tron Bon was released. Mega Man Legends 3 was going to be announced, but was cancelled by Capcom, much to the anger of many fans. This cancellation would kill the entire franchise. And after its cancellation, a group of people created the Facebook page, 100,000 strong for bringing back Mega Man Legends 3. In mid-2012, the page reached its goal of reaching over 100,000 likes. 
The Misadventures of Tron Bond game was released on the PSN in early 2015, and Legends in September of that same year. Unfortunately, there has been no news on Mega Man Legends 3. There are those who lost faith in waiting while others are hopelessly waiting for it. Now that Mega Man 11 is on its way, there's probably some hope or not. But as they say, tomorrow never knows. In the early 2000s, after Mega Man X6 was created against Inafune's wishes, the developer himself created Mega Man Zero. Zero will be the main character of the game and his appearance from the X series has been altered and his personality is much more serious. The story begins with a resistance group escaping from the forces of Near Arcadia led by Master X, and a young woman named Ciel heads to Zero's chamber to wake him up and turn the tide of the war. Zero, who had sealed himself away to rid himself of the Maverick virus, finally wakes up and helps Ciel in the resistance fight against Neo Arcadia. Zero has two weapons, his Z-Buster and Z-Zaber. The more he fights with these weapons and others such as a Shield Boomerang and Triple Rod, he will level them up, gaining new abilities. Unlike the X-Series, he would not absorb enemies' abilities, but have elemental chips of fire, ice, and thunder, and use it against bosses and enemies. New weapons would also be introduced in future games. Zero could also use Cyber Elves to upgrade health, heal, hacking, and so on. But once these little Cyber Elves are used, they die. Feeding them would increase their levels, which are useful for upgrades. And like the X series, this story is much darker, introducing new antagonists such as Master X, El Piso, and Dr. Vile. The second installment will introduce the Dark Baby Elves, and the third one would introduce Dr. Vile and Omega. The fourth and final installment would have Zero fight for the last time against Dr. Vile himself. The Mega Man Zero was compiled into a collection for the Nintendo DS known as the Mega Man Zero Collection. Mega Man Battle Network is the second spin-off of the Mega Man franchise to be a full role-playing game and Legends was the first one. This new Mega Man was not a Reploid or a robot created by Dr. Thomas Light. He was a computer program. The story of the Network series took place in the year 2000X, sometimes written as 2000XX, in an alternate version of the Mega Man universe. Like the original, there were two main projects and only one was funded. But unlike the original, the work of Dr. Da Dashi Hikari, the series version of Dr. Light, the name makes reference to both Light and Wright being correct names for Mega Man's creator in the original series. In the field of networking and AI programs had been funded over Dr. Wiley's research in robotics. The result of Dr. Hikari's research was a PET, a small computer which is used similarly to a cellular phone or PDA and which contains a customizable artificial intelligence complete with emotions known as a NetNavi, short for Network Navigator. A NetNavi is responsible for helping the operator search, use, and serve the internet as well as protect the PET and itself from viruses. Within years, the internet evolves to the point where it literally becomes possible to send an AI into it and physically move around it as if it were another world, and technically it is. There is some danger, however. Viruses evolve alongside Navis and the internet to become intelligent on some level. Navis presumably have advanced data to prevent tampering with their code directly. Viruses cannot harm them by corrupting their data, unlike viruses of our age, who cannot do anything but this. However, because the internet has evolved to the point of taking on, on a manifestation, so too can virtual be weapons be used. If a Navi or a virus takes too much damage, its programming will lose integrity, disperse, and be deleted shortly afterwards. Each Navi has antiviral weapons that are built directly into its programming that provide basic defense and can, in addition to this, be sent weapon programs from the PET via the use of battle chips. Mega Man Battle Network's main character was not only Mega Man, but a young boy named Lan. 
Both of them fought against a terrorist organization known as the WWW, who attempted time and time again to destroy the world using computer viruses to take over the Net Navis. Another terrorist group in Battle Network 2 is introduced. It is known as Gospel, whose plan only consisted of destroying the world using their Net Navis. Many new villains and heroes were introduced, as well as the appearance of recurring old foes and friends. Characters such as Proto Man, Zero, Roll, Bass, and so on made their appearances in sequels, not to mention other old enemies such as Gutsman, but rather an app than an enemy, it was an ally. Mega Man Battle Network was so popular in the Game Boy Advance that it had spawned an anime series titled Mega Man NT Warrior in Japanese, Rockman EXE. The series had six games and turned out to be a success. Battle Network remains a cult classic. Mega Man Star Force is another action role-playing game and the third spin-off to go on such a genre. Released in Japan on Christmas 2006 and in the following month in North America, it is an action RPG in the same style as Battle Network. The game was released in three separate versions simultaneously, subtitled Pegasus, Leo, and Dragon. L much like Pokemon that has alternate versions like Yellow, Crystal, Red, Blue, and so on. However, the Dragon version was initially released exclusively to GameStop and EB Game Stores in North America. The Star Force series takes place 200 years after Battle Network. As such, Star Force deviates greatly from the standard Mega Man fair because it draws almost exclusively on elements from Battle Network, making very few references or allusions to the other Mega Man games in the series. However, Capcom has produced Star Force as a standalone series, meaning players can fully enjoy the title without being familiar with the Battle Network series. 200 years had passed since the Battle Network series. Emphasis on internet technology has lessened, and instead, the world has become networked through use of EM waves. Though cyber worlds and net navis still exist in Star Force, human dependency on them has greatly decreased and people no longer have Navi companions. Three large satellites orbiting the Earth, Pegasus, Leo, and Dragon power the EM wave world that exists around the Earth's atmosphere, keeping the world networked. While the EM wave world is normally invisible to the human eye, a special piece of eyewear called the visualizer allows a human to see this other world. However, like with the cyber worlds of Battle Network, EM wave viruses inhabit the EM wave world, causing problems in everyday life. The main character of Star Force is Geo Stellar, a lonely fifth grader who is sad and depressed because of the disappearance of his father in space and lives with his mother in Echo Ridge. Until one day at Vista Point, an EM wave appeared out of the blue and activated his visualizer, which once belonged to his father. The EM wave was actually a resident of the extraterrestrial planet that Kelvin was studying, a species called Ephemian. He called himself Omega Sis, also called Mega for short, and said that he was a fugitive of the planet FM, his home planet. Then a wave viruses took over a train and attempted to harm the Echo Ridge town, which led to Omega Sis helping Geo out, and they fused to form a living wave body known as Electromagnetic wave change. From that day, he became Mega Man. New heroes and villains were introduced in this fantastic game. There was also a sequel in which Geo Stellar returns once again to fight a new enemy called Dark Phantom. And in the third and final game, he fights the criminal organization known as Dealer. Mega Man Star Force was just as successful as Battle Network spawning sequels, manga, and even another anime. The anime was titled Shooting Star Rockman, which only had 21 episodes. Mega Man ZX is the final spin-off of the Mega Man franchise, being first released in 2006. The ZX series took place 300 years after the end of Mega Man 04, and the world is in an era 
where humans and reploids are finally coexisting in peace. After some time passes, the humanoids, humans and reploids of Earth, manage to revive some of the former nations of Earth. However, preventing further prosperity like back in the old days, incidents around Earth begin when some of the machine lifeforms become mavericks, making some areas dangerous. Soon, this activity obstructs trading between nations. Thus, the nations become divided into areas designated as inner peace, utopistic cities, which provide a safe haven for humanoids, and the outlands where the dangerous mavericks, reploids, and mechanoloids who threatened the peace appeared. Inner peace and the outlands are divided into areas. Remarkable developments were made due to the efforts of this corporation, Slither Inc. They possess technology on Earth from ruins in the Outlands. Mega Man ZX introduces two new characters, Vent and Isle, who lost their parents to Maverick Attacks at an amusement park. They were taken in by Girouette, or Giro, owner of Giro Express, a delivery service company delivering all kinds of items. In the story, whatever characters selected are headed for a delivery when attacked by Mavericks and encounter Prairie, leader of the Guardians. Using the biometal, Ventor Isle become the new Mega Man X. The ZX games has gameplay elements of Mega Man X and Mega Man Zero. People can select Vent or Isle to play. Like in all games except Battle Network, Legends, X7 and X8, and Command Mission and Star Force, the graphics are rendered in 2D sprites where they engage enemies to finish their mission. When a player receives a bio medal, he is able to change form gaining various abilities such as the charge moves or charging the player's weapon with an element of that bio medal. For example, Bio Metal H will charge the weapon with electricity. While in a special form, using the form specific abilities use up weapon energy, when the player receives the other half of the bio medal, he is able to perform a different special ability. Missions are selected from a list displayed on a computer. The player can freely explore the game world during and between missions, and they must find a specified area themselves. Computer chips can be found to complete a game database. Also, there are life ups which fill the health bar. These can be compared to the heart tanks from the Mega Man X series. Bosses all have their own individual weak points. It is where the biometal they're using is stored. Hitting it deals more damage than the other hits, but it also decreases your ranking level at the end of the battle. After no future games were announced, a spiritual successor titled Mighty No. 9 was released in 2016. Unfortunately, the reviews were not as positive as expected since the game failed to capture the spirit of the beloved franchise that is Mega Man. However, after the crushing cancellation of Mega Man Legends 3, many indie devs would create fan-made games such as Mega Man Cross Street Fighter, in which Mega Man would fight against the characters of the Street Fighter series of games. Mega Man X Corruption is another fan-made game which looks fantastic as well. But of course, Mega Man was seen in other games where he would fight alongside fellow Capcom stars like Ryu, Dante, Arthur, Chun-Li, and Chris Redfield against Marvel characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Doctor Strange in the Marvel vs. Capcom series of games. Mega Man Volnut will join his fellow Capcom stars against Tatsunoko characters in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Mega Man will be a playable character in Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and 3DS and will return in Ultimate. And finally in conclusion, this got me nostalgic and into playing Mega Man again. I am very happy that Mega Man 11 is coming as well as the X Legacy Collection. Mega Man holds a special place in my heart as a gamer. Playing Mega Man is something I will always remember for as long as I live. I remember all these times playing Mega Man X with my cousin and also with my gamer sister back when I had my Super NES. It was a pretty long season for this web series and I'm planning to come back this October. I'll be recording the episodes of Season 3 by August, with the summer coming to an end and the school year upon us at the time. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, rate, subscribe, and share. This is John, host of Video Games in the World. Have a good one. Bye-bye.